Today I'm gonna be needle felting some Pokemon from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If you're new here and don't know what needle felting is, it's basically just stabbing. I'll be stabbing some Pokemon to life today. Normally when I needle felt, I stick to more basic shapes, usually Squishmallows, which are pretty much just stuffed eggs. I have a ton of them, even some Pokemon ones that I've hidden somewhere throughout this video. Blink and you'll miss them. Okay, there are 400 Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. I can't possibly needle felt all of them. So here's the game plan. I'm gonna needle felt the three starter Pokemon, Fuecoco, Quaxly, and Sprigatito. I have a lot of wool, but I don't know if I have all the right colors. I also don't know if I have the skill level to stab together something this complex, but I guess we're about to find out. I'm starting off with a styrofoam block. I like to do all my stabbings on top of this. I've tried needle felting on top of a sponge before. Spoiler alert, that doesn't work. I've also heard you can needle felt on top of a brush. To me, that sounds like a bad idea. <clears throat> Better safe than sorry. So I just stick to my good old styrofoam block. I'm working on Fue Coco. Fue is short for Fuego, and Coco is short for Cocodrilo, which in Spanish means fire crocodile, and that's exactly what he is. My little fire crocodile. In my personal Pokemon Violet playthrough, I happened to pick Fue Coco, for obvious reasons. Clearly, he's the best. He's done some evolving since then. He now looks like this freak. Fue Coco is mostly red, so you must be wondering why I'm stabbing together white wool. That's because I have a surplus of white wool, so I'm using it for the insides, my base structure. And then I'll go over it with colored wool later on. Wool is not cheap, so I try to use my colored wool sparingly. <laughs> Fue Coco has a lot of little details and intricacies. I'm gonna have to stab together some stubby arms, claws, stubby legs, flame hairs coming out of his head, some patches on him, even his tail. That's what I'm trying to work on right now, the tail. Trying to stab that into place. For smaller details, I use my single knee. Tool. Takes longer to stab, but this way I can be more precise. Precision is key when it comes to such intricate processes. When I'm not working on the tinier details and instead just blindly stabbing things down, I like to use my multi-needle tool. There's a couple more needles in there, so it helps things move along a bit. Right now, this looks like some sort of slug or ghost or nothing. It looks pretty much like nothing. But wait till I work my magic on this. I'm bringing in a pop of red. Clearly, Fue Coco could use some more color in his life. I'm wrapping it around my slug like a little cocoon or a snuggy wuggy, if you will, and then stabbing him in the back. I wrapped and stabbed and wrapped and stabbed some more, until I finessed my way to this beauty. It's not supposed to be completely enveloped in red. I'm leaving the top of his head bald for now. I've got big plans for my little Fue Coco. He has a big, giant, open mouth. That's not something I'm used to needle felting. It's gonna be hard, but I'm up for the challenge. To make it look like he has his mouth open, I'm creating an indent, a bit of a crater on his face. I'm trying to add some depth here, but really I don't know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> I'm just doing what feels right in the moment. Take Taking things one stab at a time. Now that that's kind of looking like an open mouth, generally speaking, of course. I'm now going in with my shears. He's a little fuzzball, a little too fuzzy for my liking, so I'm trying to tame the frizz by chopping off. <laughs> so now I'm about to speed things up a bit. Needle felting wouldn't be needle felting without some actual felt. I like to use pieces of felt for the smaller details and the shapes that I just know that I won't be able to make myself. I've done quite a few needle felting videos up until this point, but I still consider myself an amateur. I mean, my ancestors were a needle felters, so I've got that going for me, but nothing else. So I'm sticking this white lily pad onto Fue Coco's stubby head. It's gonna be his top jaw, the upper mandible. That's why I'm leaving the front poking out a bit. Kinda looks like a little duck bill. To really pull off the open mouth look, I gotta add in a bottom jaw as well. Luckily, I have felt that matches my wool color, so something's working out for once. I made the bottom lip a little too big. He looked like he had a massive deformity, so I adjusted that. Brought that down to a more normal size. If Fue Coco looked like that, I wouldn't have picked him. So we have a little base shape for our Fue Coco. Now all that's left to do is add the little details and appendages and whatnot. For the most part, I pre-cut the details, so they're just kind of ready to go. I took some more red wool and stabbed that down. I'm making Fue Coco's fat, stumpy legs, trying to achieve that thick and dangerous look he always has. He's got a little flame hairdo up top. Cute, cute. Now this is the fun part. I'm trying to crush in some holes for his eyes. A long time ago. So long ago that I can't in good faith let you go watch that video. Don't do it. I'm, I'm begging you. But anyways, I used some, I don't even know what they're called, these little needle felt button eyes. They came with the kit I first bought. I used all of those and then for a long time I never replenished my supply. Until today. Now I have a whole bunch of different sized eyeballs for needle felting. My ancestors would be so proud. I stabbed a few details here and there, gave it a kiss, and boom. What a cutie. The apple of my eye. Normally when I play Pokemon, I choose the water type starter, but I didn't this time around, because just look at this ugly duckling. Hello darkness, my old friend. 
I think it's the hairstyle that I can't stand, but also his evolutionary form that never stops dancing. But nevertheless, that's who I'm stabbing right now. The one saving grace for Claxley is that he's mostly white, so at least I don't have to go over him with another color. I can appreciate that. He's got a nice, big, blocky head and a tiny little body. Normally, I like disproportionate looks, but in this case, I've made an exception. I can't stand Quaxley. Right now, he's looking more like a mushroom, which is about as good as he's ever gonna look. He's peaked. Here comes that awful hairdo. I'm trying to shape it to perfection. He's not gonna be able to pull off the look regardless, but I'm trying to make an accurate representation of him. His hair is the most important part of him to get right, I feel. Without it, he just looks like a white duck. It's his signature feature. In all honesty, I don't even know if I can even say I got his hair accurate, but after spending so long on trying to nail his look, I'm done. I've checked out. I've made some wings out of felt. He stands in this pose where he's got like one hand on his hip. A bit of attitude. I just looked it up and apparently Quaxley is the least popular starter Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Turns out nobody likes him. I was starting to think it was just me. I'm working on his beak, giving him some perfect little duck lips. Not a look most can pull off, including him. Quaxley's got a little white W stamped on his forehead. That's how you know he's a winner. <laughs> I don't know why that's there. I'm just doing what I see. I'm just recreating the Pokemon. As for the design, if you want someone to blame, take it up with Game Freak. I tried giving him a little frown. These pieces are so tiny at this point, so it's pretty much impossible to needle felt them on. I was determined to make things work, so I resorted to my one and only, my ride or die, fabric hot glue. For the nostrils, I didn't even try stabbing them or anything. I just kind of pulled out some fabric markers and drew those on. Then I realized the frown is looking like a big, bushy mustache. I can't leave it looking like that, so I shaved it off. It was being kind of stubborn. I really had to do a close shave, but eventually we got back to where we started. I should have just stuck to drawing it on with fabric markers in the first place. You live and you learn. I gave him the same button eyes that I gave Fue Coco, keeping things consistent. I do think these button eyes look cleaner and more finished than just wool or felt or painting them on with fabric paint. It just kind of elevates the look. I wanted Quaxley to be able to stand up, so I tried a couple different things. The floral wire was a letdown. It just doesn't stick to the felt. I thought it might bring some stability to Quaxley, but it seems like nothing can. That's a pipe dream, but I persisted. Not ready to give up just yet. Mama didn't raise no quitter, and you guys know Rar Babe is many things, but not a quitter. I used some unconventional methods. I basically just rolled some wool around with fabric hot glue into like a little stick. I don't suggest you do this unless you want fourth degree burns. But as for me, I can do this because I don't know if I've lost all feelings in my fingers, if I'm just used to all the burns, or maybe my fabric hot glue just doesn't get too hot. Either way, I made Quaxley some stick legs, even added some little feeties to the end. The legs are mostly decorative, they're for aesthetic purposes. He has a tendency to topple over every two seconds. He's very annoying. <laughs> The last Pokemon I'm making today is Sprigatito. This is the most complicated one. I saved him for last, which is probably a mistake because I'm exhausted. <laughs> Already off to a bad start. He's broken off some of my needles. Luckily, I have plenty of replacements today. I expected something like this might happen, so I came prepared. Just a little hiccup in the road. A few moments later. By the end of these needle felting videos, for whatever reason, I just start feeling completely exhausted. This is the most physical workout I pretty much get nowadays. There was also some mental hurdles involved while stabbing these together. It's therapeutic, but when you're doing it non-stop for hours on end, it has the opposite effect. I'm starting to feel the bone in my forearms. I don't know much about Sprigatito. No one talks about him. I honestly didn't even know his name until I looked it up for this video. He's a cat. He's got little tufts of fur on the sides of his face. You'd think a cat would be more popular, but no. Radio silence on Sprigatito. Not his fault though. Unlike Quaxley, he is pretty cute. I put together his head first and then I'm gonna work on his body. He's got a little tiny body with a fluffy fox-like tail. He may not be the most popular, but he's definitely the chillest out of the three starters. I stabbed together a nice, long, minty green turd. I cut that up into pieces to be Sprigatito. Tito's support system. His legs. They're a little too tiny, too delicate, way too skinny for me to stab on there, so I'm using some alternative methods. I only know one alternative method in life. It star- <laughs> It starts with a fabric and ends with a hot glue. He's looking so beautiful, it's making my eyes misty. It may not look like it, but each of these Pokemon took me a couple hours to make. These are the most complicated needle-felted creations I've ever made so far. I hope you like them. 